Hello and welcome to part two of my in-depth guide in building a trading strategy with Python. I'm going to construct a momentum strategy on the S&P 500 and I'm covering all relevant details you need for that. So previously on this series, what have we done? We pulled price data for the S&P 500 and adjusted it for the survivorship bias. So please watch part one if you haven't already. In this part, we are building the strategy, backtesting it, and we are also doing a benchmark comparison. Also, I'm doing a very interesting and striking comparison at the end of the video. So my recommendation is basically do not skip a single second of the video. Always keep in mind, every second you skip of my videos is a tear coming out of my eyes. Quick recap on the strategy itself. We are checking the past 12 month performance of all S&P 500 stocks and buying the top performers and hold them for one month. Important disclaimer, concepts shown in this video are not investment advice, videos for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, let's continue with the code. We stopped at adjusting the whole S&P 500 dataset for the survivorship bias. With that, we can start calculating daily returns. So relative price changes on our absolute price data frame, the F calling the PCD change function, ending up with a return data frame containing relative price changes. Then I'm just using those returns to accumulate them on a monthly base. If you're not familiar with the return calculation, I will link a video explaining in detail why I'm taking plus one and the product here. So how do I understand this resulting data frame monthly returns? For instance, Apple was rising by 7.16% in January 2015. This data frame is quite important because we can derive all relevant information for the strategy out of this one. First, you can use this to calculate the past 12 month returns but you can also extract the return of the one month holding period. So first let's calculate the past 12 month returns out of this. So I'm rolling over the monthly return data frame with a window of 12 and apply a product function. Mathematically, this is the exact same as accumulating the daily returns on a monthly base as I did above for the monthly return data frame. As I wouldn't get any values for the 11 first rows, I'm getting rid of them by simply dropping resulting NAN values using the drop NA function. With that, I have my 12 month return data frame. So as an example, Apple was dropping by roughly 4% over the last 12 months until this date. December 2015. Now, the only thing we have to do now is building a filtering mechanism as we need to find the top five performers for any given date. So technically, we just need to find the largest five values in every single row in the 12 month return data frame. So as an example, I defined top underscore for top performers by screening the 12 month return data frame for the very first date. I simply took December 2015 here. Then I applied the n largest function to get the top five largest values. So as you see, the top five performers over the last 12 months until December 2015, where e.g. Netflix, with a 12 month return of roughly 129%. Just as a reminder, the returns are currently in a format convenient for calculations. So this number means that Netflix has 2.29 X. So one US dollar in Netflix would have been 2.29 US dollar after 12 months. So overall a return of 129%. Next, I'm extracting the relevant date of the top performers. And that might be a bit counterintuitive due to that the name property of this series is the date. 
I need this date because this is the reference date for the one month holding period. Once I have determined the top performers for a given date, I need to have the performance of the portfolio containing those five top performers over the subsequent month. And to get the subsequent month, I'm using a simple trick here. I'm filtering the monthly return data frame for the top performers name property, which is the date. And then I'm excluding that date and just take the next row by indexing, ending up with only the row of the subsequent month. So you see December 2015 here, and here we have January 2016. As you see, I still have all stocks included, so I would need to filter for only the top performers. And this is simply the index of the top performers. So these are the names I need to filter for. So you see, I'm screening for the subsequent month and then I'm indexing for the names here. Doing that, I'm getting the relevant returns for the top performers over the holding period. And if I assume I buy those five stocks equally weighted, I can just calculate my mean return by taking the mean on axis one. So I'm just taking the horizontal mean here. So this number is telling me if I would have bought the five top performing stocks over the last 12 months, ending in December 2015, the return over the holding period of the subsequent month, so January 2016, would be roughly minus 12.6%. Next, I'm just setting up a function doing those exact steps. And this function is taking a date as a parameter. So I'm getting the portfolio return for a given date. Note that you're always passing the portfolio formation date. The profit is always the profit for the subsequent month. Then I'm just passing all relevant dates to this function. By using a loop over the 12 month return data frame index containing all dates and I'm returning the and I'm storing the returns in a list. I'm skipping the last element here because I simply cannot know the most recent return. With that, I'm getting all returns and I can accumulate them again and get this quite impressive result of roughly 3.2 25x, so 225% return of that strategy. If you visualize the time series, it would look like this. So technically, I just took the cumulative product on the return series and passed the index of the 12 month return data frame as the index. Now let's do a benchmark comparison by just pulling price data for the S&P 500. I've done that here. So you see I'm downloading price data for the S&P here and consider only the close. Then I'm just taking the last available price and divide it by the very first price. And I'm getting a result of 2.04. So the S&P was rising by roughly 104% since 2015. So the strategy clearly outperformed the S&P without taking trading fees into account. Just for the record, you can also take my accumulating return logic on the S&P from above. We'll give you the exact same result. Now, finally, let's do a very interesting thing. Let's just pull the S&P 500 as it is as of today and see how the strategy would have performed without taking the survivorship bias into account. So let's scroll all the way up. So this one we need, this one we need, this one we need. We don't need that, that one we don't. We don't need all of that. We don't need that, so we need that. This will take some seconds. We can already 
execute some additional code here. This We don't need that, we don't need all of that. We don't need this one here, but we need all of this. Monthly return, top performers, run the loop. And now this is kind of uh, insane, right? You see, without taking the survivorship bias into account, the strategy would yield a return of 18x, right? So 1.7k percent. So you see how important it is to consider the survivorship bias. But still, we outperformed the S&P 500 considering the survivorship bias. There's a lot more interesting stuff to check out here. So if you're interesting, interested in a continuation, leave the video a like and a comment. That said, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.